girl and she wants me to duka. I told her I'll come scoop her around eight. She said, that sounds great. Shorty girl. Okay, so this is Alex703 Rockstar and I am back for a, a little unexpected review here. It is if ROH is better than our best. Got this DVD because on high spots they had a, a sale or there's, it's still going on I think. Um until the end of January. It's the 2010 sale where uh, it's an ROH grab bag where you can get three DVDs that you can choose out of like a list. Um, and uh, you'll get all three for 2010 for $20.10. So that's a really good deal actually. Um, so I bought this DVD, watched this DVD, and I must say I love this DVD. Um, uh, let's get right to it because, right, time limit. So we start off the night with a six-man mayhem match. Ace Steel versus Jack Evans versus Matt Seidel versus Jimmy Jacobs versus Jake Crist versus Dave Crist. Um, Jake Crist and Dave Crist, of course, are Irish airborne. And Jack Evans and Matt Seidel were still part of Generation Next. Uh, this was Jack Evans' last match uh, before he went to... Dragon Gate for a couple of months, so they gave him the win here. Um, it was a fun match. It was like, uh, it was pretty much like all the opening matches Ring of Honor used to have. Big spot fest. There was one really cool spot with a steal, but um, other than that, nothing to write home about. A lot of dives to get the crowd pumped up, and some fun, but nothing too deep to think about. And Jimmy Jacobs, awesome. The dude draws heat like a motherfucker. Um, then we had Jim Cornette come out and pretty much, uh, be like, well, um, talking about, like, Cole Cabana and Homicide, and Cole Cabana comes out and says, you know, we're in Chicago, and it, um, this was going to be the blow-off to the Cole Cabana and Homicide feud, by the way. Um, so he says, we're pretty much, we're in Chicago, and we hate each other, so let's have a Chicago street fight, and, um, although... Jim Cornette earlier in his promo had said he hate he hated how the CCW wrestlers were doing hardcore trash or whatever. He agrees to a street fight match, which I thought was kind of funny. But um, I'll explain the difference between that and CCW wrestling later. Um, and then he said he has one more order of business. He was saying, you know, Delirious has impressed me so much with his athleticism and everything, and he excites the crowd, but he's forgetting to win, and you have to win, so he offered this challenge to Delirious. He said, Delirious, you can call anyone out in the locker room, and if you, and for any match, but, uh, if you lose, then you'll be fired from the roster. Okay, Delirious calls out Ricky Reyes from the Rottweilers, who they had been having a small little feud. And this was a very short match, probably six, seven minutes, but uh, it was fun. And um, Delirious got his first singles win in ROH, so the crowd went kind of wild because they had a really good face moment there. Um, the heat generated by the Rottweilers, by Julius Smokes especially, was awesome. Um, and so Delirious had a great little moment there, but it wasn't a great match. Uh, it wasn't a bad match either, though. Then we had uh, Jimmy Rave versus Alex Shelley. Jimmy Rave, I'm sorry. Jimmy Rave and Alex Shelley and Masato Yoshino. Um, Jimmy Rave and Alex Shelley being part of the embassy. Um, versus Dragon Kid, Genki Horiguchi, and Ryo Saito. Um, if you've seen Barely Legal from ECW and you saw the six-man Japanese tag match there... That's what this was, pretty much. Um, and it was just as good. It, this was really, really good. Um, the spots they put together were awesome, and it had me marking out um, by by the end of the match. I mean, this match, and I hardly ever mark out. And th this match was really good. But it was the beginning of a bunch of multi-man matches in a row, which is one of the few problems I saw with this show. There were way too many multi-man matches. Um... Um, so then we had Four Corner Survival, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe versus Christopher Daniels versus Jimmy Yang. Um, so Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles had already had their feud in TNA, and they had already had the Unbreakable match that was incredible. So the fans were kind of like, no matter what they did here, it wasn't going to top that. And and so the fans they didn't shit on it at all, but it, but, um, it was kind of like, they they expected more maybe they uh it didn't impress them as much because they know that they can put on this 
crazy good match. But this was still really good. Um, also, I think another thing that it had going against it was that it was the second multi-man match in the row. So seeing all these multi-man spots and dives kind of it didn't work as much in this match. Um, um, oh, yeah, and I forgot. Before this match, Lance Storm cut a promo about Brian Danielson because he was having a match later. This is Lance Storm's big, big one-time comeback. Um, uh, and it was actually pretty decent for a Lance Storm promo. Um, then after this, Samoa Joe was in the ring saying he wants to challenge Brian Danielson for his title. Then Brian Danielson came out. This was when he was a heel, mind you, which he was awesome at. I don't get people that say Brian Danielson can't talk on the mic. He's great. Um, he pretty much said that if it, if it wasn't for the ROH belt, Samoa Joe would still be climbing up coconut trees in Samoa or whatever. Really funny stuff. But um, so they... He pretty much agrees to challenge him at some point in the future. Uh, Danielson's really good on the mic. So is Joe. But then Joe gets attacked by Chris Hero and Necro Butcher because at this time they were running the CCW invasion angle, um, which I thought was well done because then Adam Pierce came out. He was supposed to be like the the bouncer, um, and he and they kind of brawled for a while, and then the CCW guys got the advantage and the ROH youth. Um, academy people, um, the, the ROH students came out and, um, and they cleared the ring, whatever. Um, good, good angle there, I have to say. Um, the whole CCW ROH war was really well done. Then we had the tag team title match, Roderick Strong and Austin Aries, Generation Next, and Blood Generation. Uh, there was nothing too original about this match, but I have to say what they did was really good. It started off by uh, Blood Generation, I mean, uh, Sh Shima of Blood Generation. Blood Generation consisted of um, Naruki Doi and Shima. Um, um, he got worked over uh, for a short amount of time, and then um, Austin Aries got worked over for a while, for a long while. And Blood Generation did a really good job of making themselves look vicious here. Um, and then they made the comeback... Um, Generation Next did, um, and then they had a, like about nine, ten minutes of awesome back and forth action. That was just great. So the format of the match wasn't like original or anything, but it was really well done. Then we had Brian Danielson versus Lance Storm, and this was literally such a good match, and it was so well done considering what was going to come after it because these two guys are technical wrestlers. I mean, Brian Danielson can do pretty much everything, and Storm can high fly as well, but their forte is technical wrestling, right? But um, but it they did technical wrestling here, and what was so good about it, since the next match was a Chicago street fight, this came off so awesome because they were just it 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 wasn't a brawl or anything. It just seemed like an awesome athletic competition, and it made it great. This match was great, even better than the last match. This pay-per-view just kept getting better and better. Then we came to the main event, Homicide vs. Colt Cabana, Chicago Street Fight. Holy crap, this was awesome. This was a great blow-off to a great view. The video package shown before it was awesome. It was like Colt Cabana had to find peace within himself. That whole storyline was so good, and it was made better because Brian and Lance weren't doing hardcore spots on the floor. And so then when these guys guys did do it it seemed original and that whole spot with the fans throwing their chairs in and everything so awesome so so freaking awesome and then the ending to the match was just really fr fucking brilliant where cabana hits the power bomb through the table onto the barbed wire and homicide kicks out and then cabana hits the lariat homicide kicks out and then Hom and cabana hits the colt 45 and, and then he's going, please, like, please don't kick out. And he doesn't, and Cabana wins, and then he gets his smile back or whatever. That was so well done. And then Homicide does the best thing, saying afterwards he finally got his respect or whatever and calling the Rottweilers off or whatever. It worked so well. The fans fucking loved it. So great, great stuff on this show. Great show. Um, it may not have been their best show, uh, so I guess it wasn't better 